I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Friday, September the 20th, 2013. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office responded yesterday to the two-part interview shown on NBC with recently elected Iranian President Hassan Rouhani. As we reported to you during the interview, Rouhani said his country was not seeking war and said Israel was bringing instability to the region with its warmongering policies. The Prime Minister's office yesterday warned that the international community should not be deceived by the Iranian president's deceptive words and called out Rouhani for accusing Israel of causing instability in the region at a time when Iran was sending people into Syria to slaughter innocent civilians and was supporting terrorism around the world. Netanyahu's office called Rouhani's claim that Iran is not in pursuit of nuclear weapons spin designed to ensure that Iran's centrifuges continue to spin. The office said only a combination of stopping uranium enrichment, removing all enriched uranium, dismantling the nuclear facility at Qom, and stopping the plutonium track will constitute a real halt to the nuclear program. Until these four steps are taken, it said, the international community needs to intensify the pressure on Iran, adding the test is not Rouhani's words, but rather the Iranian regime's actions. Even while Rouhani was being interviewed, Iran was moving to forward, the prime minister's office said, energetically with its nuclear program. Meanwhile, Reuters reports that member states of the United Nations Nuclear Agency rejected an Arab resolution singling out Israel for criticism over its alleged nuclear weapons today. Arab states had submitted the non-binding resolution to the annual gathering of the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna. 51 countries voted against the resolution and 43 for. Had the resolution been adopted, the proposal would call on Israel to join a global anti-nuclear weapons treaty and place its nuclear facilities under IAEA monitoring. The U.S. had said this week that such a move would hurt broader diplomatic efforts towards creating a Middle East zone free of weapons of mass destruction. And Israel had said it would deal a, quote, serious blow to any attempt to hold regional security talks. Both U.S. and Israeli officials have said that a nuclear arms-free zone in the Middle East could not be a reality until there was broad Arab-Israeli peace and until Iran curbed its nuclear program. The Jerusalem Post reports that new Ashkenazi chief rabbi David Lau said he supports the idea of providing non-Orthodox denominations with a prayer space at the Robinson's Arch area, which is located south of the Western Wall Plaza in Jerusalem. In an exclusive interview with the Post, Lau said the construction of the prayer platform by the Religious Services Ministry was, quote, the correct idea. But he also insisted that religious practice in the main prayer area at the Kotel remain orthodox. Lau said he doesn't want to prevent anyone from coming and praying in the way they want to pray, but he does want to request from everyone to respect the existence of the established custom. Lau said the reality is that when such customs exist for a group of women to start to come and sing and disturb the minhag hamakom or local custom, I think that, in accordance with derech eretz, or decent behavior, this isn't the way to behave. He said the behavior must be appropriate and respectful to other people. Oh, Apparently a reference to the women of the wall group who fight for equal worship at the holy site. They oppose the Robinson's Arch platform, calling it an attempt to circumvent a recent ruling by the Jerusalem District Court, which provides legal authorization for women to pray with prayer shawls and to fill in in the women's section of the Western Wall Plaza. In response to Lau's comments, Women of the Wall Executive Director Leslie Sachs said her group's activities were part of the customs of the site. She said if a group has been doing something for 25 years, then they are part of the Minhag Hamakom. And nothing we are doing, she, does, she said, is against Jewish law. If the custom of the place is in accordance with Halakha, then we are in that framework. Adding to say that we shouldn't be there because our voices are disturbing, no one can accept this in Israel in 2013. The 16th Palestinian Authority government was sworn in by PA President Mahmoud Abbas in Ramallah yesterday. The government, which is headed by Prime Minister Rami Hamdallah, remained the same 
as it had been in the past, with sources in Ramallah saying that President Abbas refused to allow Hamdallah to replace any of the 24 ministers. You may recall that Hamdallah had handed in his resignation to Abbas just a few weeks after he was named prime minister. However, he later backtracked and remains in the position today. Ynet reports that Israel's security agency, the Shin Bet, warned that there are Arab Israelis who are joining rebel forces in Syria and possibly working with al-Qaeda terrorists. The Shin Bet submitted a review to the state prosecutor's office and the Supreme Court in Israel. It said there is a possibility that Arab Israelis who are being trained in Syria could use their knowledge against Israel both by spreading ideologies and by using intel and military capabilities that they've learned there. They also noted that global jihad terrorists could gather valuable information about Israel from Arab Israelis. The Simon Wiesenthal Center strongly criticized Amnesty International for choosing Pink Floyd frontman Roger Waters to present the International Human Rights Group's upcoming Ambassador of Conscience Award. Waters is known as a harsh and outspoken critic of Israel and strong supporter of the BDS or Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions movement. Associate Dean of the Wiesenthal Center, Rabbi Abraham Cooper, said once again Amnesty International is signaling that its fight for human rights apparently does not extend to anti-Semitism. He said instead of denouncing Roger Waters for his bigotry, Amnesty International places him center stage of their human rights celebration. The same Roger Waters, he said, who brazenly floats a pig with the Jewish Star of David at concerts across Europe, including Germany and Warsaw, and who is a leading campaigner promoting a cultural boycott of Israel, the Middle East's only democracy. Israeli President Shimon Peres left Israel today for the Ukraine for an international conference of presidents, prime ministers, and foreign ministers. Paris will take the opportunity at the 10th annual conference to meet with various European leaders and talk about several issues of concern for Israel, including strengthening bilateral relations, advancing the peace process between Israel and the Palestinians, preventing Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons, and ridding Syria of chemical weapons. Paris is also expected to try and persuade European leaders to lobby against the decision by the European Union to bar aid to Israeli organizations that operate beyond the pre-1967 borders. Later this month, Paris will pay an official four-day visit to the Netherlands and meet with recently crowned King Willem-Alexander. He'll also meet with the Dutch Prime Minister and address the upper and lower houses of Parliament at the end of April. Paris also plans on traveling to the U.S. later this year. And the Israeli president will be opening his sukkah to the Israeli public next week. The president's residence sukkah will be open to the public on Tuesday. And presented at the sukkah will be the biggest date in the world, which is grown in Israel. The date fruit of the Abraham species grows to a length of 8 centimeters. They were cultivated at the Eden Research and Development Farm in Emek Hamayanot. According to the Israeli Agricultural Ministry, the Abraham date fruit was planted seven years ago in Israel, but it was only harvested for the first time this year. And finally, live Shabbat services will be broadcast from New York City's Central Synagogue at 6 p.m. this evening, as they are every Friday night. That's coming up at 6 here on Shalom TV and ShalomTV.com. Wishing you a Shabbat Shalom. That's Shalom TV's news update for Friday, September the 20th, 2013. I'm Tisha Bader.